Hello. Uh, so, last week you looked at measuring wave speed and you created some waves, hopefully, at home. You measured the distance that they travelled, the length of the bar twice, and the speed, uh, the time that it took for them to travel that distance. And you used the equation speed equals the distance over time. Today, we are going to briefly look at an experiment which we will have to do um, when we eventually end up back at school, and uh, because it's one of the PAGs, one of the required practicals for the GCSE. But we're going to use the other wave speed equation, uh, or the wave speed equation, and we're going to try and simulate this on the line. Okay, so normally when you do this experiment, you will have a tank, and in that it's a very shallow tank, it's square, and it will have a little bit of water in it, and there will be a bar in that water that will vibrate up and down and create waves that move across. Uh, we haven't got that here and now, so we're going to use a website. So this is the, um, the Ripple simulator. So uh, if I, it's paused at the moment, so if I put a few drops in there and then click on this button, it will start them. You see there's ripples moving out, but these ones from the top are interested in. So these are ripples on the surface. We're looking down through the surface of the virtual water and we can see the light bands and dark bands. The light bands are caused by light being focused as it passes down through the wave. So you get bright bands and the dark bands are the, the light goes through a trough and is spread apart. We don't need to know the specific details about how the light bands and the dark bands are created but we do need to understand that every light band and dark band together make one wave. So that's like a peak and then a trough. And uh, we can see these waves traveling down the screen. OK, so essentially we're imagining that they're traveling across the surface of the water. And there's a couple of measurements we can make. Uh, and I'm going to show you how we do this. OK, I don't know why the uh, video of my screen is showing up quite yellow, but this is the video on this side. Uh, on this side, you should see what's actually happening on my screen. So the two measurements I want to make. The first measurement I want to make is the wavelength. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this button here, and you can do this when uh, you try this at home, uh, where it says stopped. So just click that tick, and these the simulation freezes. OK, and you'll see on this side of the screen now, I can literally take a ruler and I can put the ruler on the screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from the top of a dark band here, 10 waves. So I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I'm going to measure to the top of the that dark band there. So there I've, I've counted 10 waves. 1, 2, 3. 10 whole waves. So that's 10 dark bands and 10 light bands being measured. And whatever measurement I get here, if I divide that by 10, I'll get the average uh, wavelength for those 10 waves. So I'm just making one measurement of 10 waves, and I'm going to divide that by 10, and I'm going to write that down in meters. OK, so I just wanted to show you that I've written down the length of the 10 waves I measured from the screen, divided that by 10 to get the length of one wave, and converted that into metres. Now I'm going to take the second measurement. OK, so we seem to have managed to sort the colour out, which is a good thing. Now, um, just to make this easier, what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the number of waves that pass in 10 seconds. OK. So I need to get the simulation moving again. And the reason I've put a ruler across here is just so that I've got a point at which I can actually see the waves crossing. It's much easier to count if I can see that point. You might just want to use your finger on the screen or whatever you like. And I've got a digital stopwatch here on the computer. You might want to use any stopwatch, your phone or whatever. I'm going to start the timer 
and I'm going to count the number of dark bands that pass the ruler in 10 seconds. So here goes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. I counted 24. Now, I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. It might have been 23. It might have been 25. So I might repeat that again for another 10 seconds, repeat it again for another 10 seconds and take an average. And I'm going to show you what you're going to do with that number. OK, so if I've got 24 waves in 10 seconds, what I'm really interested in is how many waves are being generated by the ripple tank every second. So again, I'm going to take this number 24 and I'm going to divide it by 10 to get the number of waves per second. Now at the moment I haven't used any of the uh, proper names for these variables and I've got two that I'm really interested in. I've got this, now this is the length of one wave and you should remember that the name of that variable is wavelength. So I can say the wavelength of these waves is equal to 0 0.0085 meters. And this here, 2.4 uh, waves per second. Waves per second um, is actually is a unit which we call hertz. And hertz is the unit of frequency. So this is the frequency of our waves. So I can write this down as frequency equals 2.4 hertz. And these are the variables I need to calculate the wave speed using the wave speed equation, which we learnt um, a little while ago now. And that is the wave speed equals frequency times wavelength. So I know it's a simulation, but this is what you would do in real life, and you will do this in real life with a ripple tank next year. It's important that we know how to do this at this stage, though. So I would like you to do what I've just done online. Uh, follow the link from Show My Homework to the Wave Simulator. When you get to the Wave Simulator, it's important that you uh, it'll open straight up onto this page, and you need to use this drop-down menu and choose Plain Wave. There's lots of other waves you might be interested to look at and play around with, but the one we're going to use for this investigation is um, plain wave. Where has it gone? It's just disappeared. There it is. Plain wave. Okay, so um, you also might want to change. I don't recommend making it faster because that slows your computer down a bit. Um, you might even, if, if your computer's finding this a bit glitchy, you could reduce the speed, you could reduce the resolution, um, and it'll start again and it might be a bit smoother. Um, you can choose whichever frequency you like, okay, and you should find actually that the speed of these waves, once we've, if we're not fiddling with the simulation speed, if we're just fiddling with the frequency, the speed of the waves will remain the same. Um, but your frequency and wavelengths will be different. So you could play around with those as well. But I would like you to have at least one set of results uh, like these, please. I'd like you to show me that you've managed to measure the length of 10 waves and use that to calculate the length of one wave, that you've measured uh, the number of waves in 10 seconds. And I would like you to repeat that three times, get an average, and then work out from that average number of waves in 10 seconds, the number of waves per second. And then I'd like you to uh, write down your variables and then use the wave speed equation. I haven't actually gone through and plugged these numbers in. I think you can do that yourself. OK, so that's your task for this lesson. And uh, write it all up, please. Thank you.